um, just to wrap up, the system is that we make this framework, we are the time, we have been working on this uh, for a couple of months all together here at Rietveld and then for this week we invited curators, Tuesday we had Aneta Silak from Poland, we had uh, Grant Watson from London who presented the program yesterday from the Netherlands and also from inside the Rietveld Academy we had Jurin de Seidel and today I really very warmly welcome um, someone who um, is not only a writer and a curator and the director of Mustin in Wales, a very, um, it's going to be the most important art center in the UK, I think. Um, um, he has been involved in, in uh, Last Manifesta, some of you may have seen some of his works there, but also very important, he is an artist. And from the curators he's in, uh, we have invited, he is the one that really also pronounces that. Apart from being a curator, writer, and all these other things, he is an artist, and being an artist informs all his practices. Um, I very warmly welcome Alfredo to present us and to host this uh, final day of We Are The Time. Alfredo. not be able to stay home, brother. You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. You will not be able to lose yourself on gag and skip out for beer during commercials because the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the rocks and four parts without commercial interruptions. The revolution will not show you pictures of Nixon blowing a bugle and leading a charge by John Mitchell, General Abrams, and Spiro Agnew to eat hog moths confiscated from a Harlem sanctuary. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be brought to you by the shape of a war theater and will not star Natalie Woods and Steve McQueen or Bullwinkle and Julia. The revolution will not give your mouth sex appeal. The revolution will not get rid of the nub. The revolution will not make you look five pounds thinner because the revolution will not be televised, brother. There will be no pictures of you and Willie Mae pushing that shopping cart down the block on the dead run or trying to slide that color TV into a stolen ambulance. NBC will not be able to predict the winner at 8.32 on the court from 29 districts. The revolution will not be televised. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. The revolution will not be right back after a message about a white tornado, white lightning, or white people. You will not have to worry about a dove in your bedroom, the tiger in your tank, or the giant in your toilet bowl. The revolution will not go better with coke. The revolution will not fight germs that may cause bad breath. The revolution will put you in the driver's seat. The revolution will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised, will not be televised. The revolution will be no rerun, brothers. The revolution will be live. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, it was just to kick off the day, a bit of energy, actually. I think it was good. Uh, I picked up this video, not only because it's a gorgeous video, and, uh, and, and a very important song as well. It's because uh, it's, it's about being kind of alive, uh, that means here and now in this moment. And that's actually what we are here actually, it says we are the time, it's precisely this concert. And, uh, and I picked some lines actually today uh, about the overall concert of We Are The Time. Just, it's the last day, I think it's good to remind where we started. The concert of We Are The Time I quote, <laughs> it says, we are the time we'll explore the role of life time and life experience as a crucial source of ideas and inspiration, as a force that shapes one's art practice. Life experience is always generated as intersection between the personal rhythm of one's life and the larger societal perspective. How do we position ourselves in time? What are the decisive moments in our personal lives? What is our relation to the historical moment or context? How do we weave them into one life narratives? And it goes on and it says, with the advent of digital technologies and new regime of representation, the rapid changes in our media environment suggest very different ways 
of relating to the materiality of images and to their authenticity. The network condition we live in offers unprecedented possibilities to have simultaneous and multiple perspectives on events with social and historical significance. This implies a very different mode of historicizing or writing down our memories. It is in this vortex of eventfulness we have to find ourselves again. And I think we have to find ourselves again, being here and now as well. So, in today's session, today expanded conference, I would say, um, it's called I Told You So. And uh, you probably have read it actually on the website or on the printout. Uh, I have invited four participants, um, which they have done all the work, really, so I, <laughs> I'll be frank with that, actually. I kind of put together them, and then as I kind of had some exchange and things like that, but it's really down to them, really, not to me. And uh, Kathy Haynes, Sally O'Reilly, Ty Shani, and Faye Nicholson addressed this relationship between near and far from diverse perspectives. And, uh, and they address a number of things. Uh, what is the relationship between gossip and the history books? or between a shopping list and a further the future of industry through in the digital age, or between a general election and uh, eternity. It is very difficult to pinpoint how our everyday dramas relate to the, to the bigger story, to the bigger picture, let's say, but since humanity is indeed made of humans, so we, there must be surely a way of describing a particular time to include all those presents, so there must be a a way to make sense of what we're doing now in relation to the bigger picture, basically. Um, each of the contributors here uh, assembles, reappropriates, or reenacts recorded information, uses narratives as a vehicle to drive it towards new destination. It means it, they pick up something and they recontextualize to give either new meaning, but also new interpretation. The interpretation comes from you, really. The, the tone might be media savvy, fantastical, literary or, or academic, but the result invariably shimmers between experience and fancy, the rational and the ridiculous, sentimentality and satire. Uh, I also draw, actually, before kicking off with the day, a number of, uh, how do you call it, tags, maybe, words, um, yeah, something like that. I just read it, because I didn't want to use the screen, but I just read it. Vital, value system, tumultuous existence, traces of real, time map, singular lives, self-governed institution, resulting trend, relevant mockery, rational, quantifiable entity, propositional archive, that's a good one, propagation, promise, precursor, possibility of writing, poor documentation, good one, network digital reign, modest accomplishment, minor improvement, mapping, space mapping or time mapping, life record, language, irreverent, individual attempt, ideological impression, hilarious, future school, fuel of history, fleeting episodes, engine of influence, digital correspondence, conflicting sources, common fear, collective attempt, author and achievement. They were in reverse alphabetical order, if you notice. Um, I mentioned yesterday in my very brief introduction that in a way, uh, personally at least, the way I work as an artist, that includes many other things really, it's, it's trying to kind of a prefigure what is going to be 50 years from now, or 70 years from now, or 100 years from now, and then work back. Uh, which is an interesting speculation. It's something that uh, is really engaging because uh, each of us actually can imagine a future, and it's really interesting when you can project yourself into that kind of a far future and work back and say, okay, what is going to be relevant in 100 years? Uh, how are you going to use me or someone else who comes after me? How are we going to use you know, things, sofa, tables, schools, institution, internet, if there will be an internet? And then try to work back and try to identify whatever we do in here 
now in this moment live uh, try to make some sort of a brick of what we're doing now to construct an architecture for the future and that is a really really important thing I think um, because it informs whatever we do and it relates to a bigger context it's uh, um, it's it's kind of a uh, maybe it's uh, it's uh, is, a, is, a, is an ambition um, uh, which is fine, I think. Uh, as an artist, probably uh, uh, you have to be ambitious as well, and uh, and uh, you have to be serious ambition, not solemn ambitious, but serious ambition. I think is a good thing. Anyway, enough for me. There will be four sessions. Uh, Kathy will kick off. Actually, she already did with this fantastic map. If you haven't seen it, come and see it afterward, because it's really, really worth. Um, and then we have a break, and then Sally, O'Reilly, uh, and then Ty. Well, there will be breaks in between the session of different lengths, really. During the break, we're going to screen some film, video, extracts of films, let's say, um, which I will tell you one by one. And uh, after Sally, there will be Ty with, uh, uh, with, with her performance, and then Faye. All these four contributions, they have a very strong performative element, I would say. So they're not really uh, classical lecture, I would say, uh, but they're kind of a hybrid, in a way. Um, at the end of the day, so around five, uh, if you stick around, uh, the idea was to bring us together here and have a Q&A. So we don't have the Q&A after each session, not to break the voice. Is that correct, Sally? <laughs> <laughs> One voice. Uh, not to break the voice, but we go straight into a break and film and then the other session. And then we're going to have about you know, 20 minutes, half an hour Q&A at the end with all the participants. And you're more than welcome actually to... to jot down your question or remember and, and, uh, and be here actually between 5 and 5.30 to, to question us uh, ferociously. <laughs> okay, I'll start with Cathy, Cathy Haynes. Uh, Cathy is a London-based curator, artist and writer. She is researching uh, a history of official maps that contain an element of deliberate fiction a secret code, a hidden message, a fake entity. She is also a founder, faculty member, and currently curator of public program at the School of Life in London, which is an interesting, how would you call it? University of Life, something like that. School. <laughs> she was formerly curator of, for Art on the, on the Underground in London, co-editor of Implica Sphere, and head of interaction at Art Angel. Please, Cathy Haynes.